Hey guys, how are you? Today's video is gonna be a little bit different. I wanted to talk a little bit about my personal experience with cholesterol and statin medication. And I'm gonna start right after this. Hey guys, welcome to AD Keto. My name is Aaron. This is the channel where we talk about the ketogenic diet. I do some keto food vlogs, talk a little bit about keto science and do some keto recipes. If this is your first time here, please consider subscribing. And if you do, be sure to click the bell icon so you get a notification whenever I upload new content. All right guys, so this is a video that's been a long time coming. I have wanted to do, the, to do this video for a while. It's about cholesterol and my personal experience with cholesterol. Um, before I even get started, uh, I want to make sure you guys understand that I am not a doctor. I'm not a medical professional of any kind. I'm not trying to give anyone any medical advice. This is simply my experience uh, with um, the world of high cholesterol and statin medications. So I'm going to take you guys back a little while to about 2010 or so. Um, I went for routine blood work. I, at this point, was at about age 35, 36, and my cholesterol came back as pretty high. It was around 300 total. And my doctor put me on a torvastatin medication, 20 milligrams. A torvastatin is more commonly known as Lipitor. It's a very common um, cholesterol-lowering medication. And so I listened to my doctor and I went on this medication uh, and I was on it for a while and my cholesterol numbers went down and my doctor was very happy. Uh, but I felt like garbage. My joints hurt and I had sort of a brain fog and I didn't even put two and two together. I didn't even think for a second that it was the atorvastatin that was giving me these side effects. Uh, I just chalked it up to me getting older and getting creakier, maybe getting a little bit more forgetful. But in doing a little bit of research, I found that these are very common side effects to, a to, uh, to statin medications in general. So I stayed on the medications just because my doctor told me to, and I was scared to go off them because I was afraid that if I, my cholesterol got too high, I would have a heart attack and die. Um, so I began to exercise regularly, even while on the statin medications, I began to run uh, 5k races and I actually built up my endurance and um, to the point where I could run a marathon. I ran and finished the 2012 M Mohawk Hudson Marathon. Uh, and in training for that marathon, I felt terrible. I would run, go out for a long training run on the weekends, come back and need a day to recover. My body just hurts so much. Um, and it bummed me out because I really enjoyed running. So, uh, I yo-yoed with my weight for a little while. After this marathon, I sort of started eating poorly, ate a lot of, you know, frozen pizzas and just made bad choices. Um, but my cholesterol kind of stayed in that normal range because I was still on the atorvastatin. Uh, and then in early 2017, I sort of had enough yo-yoing and I decided to start keto. I found keto through a friend at work and tried it for a little while. And within a week, was in love with it because um, I felt amazing, better than I had in a long time. Uh, didn't really have much of the keto flu, maybe a few days. And then I think the fourth day after I started keto, um, I can remember waking up and feeling like something was different. Wasn't hungry, had a lot of energy, um, was becoming fat adapted. So uh, I decided to stay with it. And I also decided to drop my statin medication and I stopped taking my statins in January and um, got some baseline blood work done at the time. And then a few months later, uh, when I went to see my doctor again, um, had my blood work done again, and my numbers were up, which what I expected. I expected my cholesterol to go up and um, he was worried and really didn't know what to do. I told him that I felt better than I had in years. He wanted me to go back on the statin meds. I did not, did not agree, did not go back on them. Um, he said, let's give it a few more months and see how you're doing then. A few more months went by and I lost a grand total from the, from January until about July. I'd lost 50 something pounds. 
um, which he was thrilled about. And at this time, when I got my lipids done, I got what's called an NMR lipid profile. And NMR stands for nuclear magnetic resonance. And what that does is, as opposed to a normal lipid panel, it measures not only um, your total cholesterol, but it actually breaks down your HDL, your LDL, uh, the number of particles, the size of the particles, the consistency of the particles. It's much more information um, that gives you a lot clearer picture of what's going on with your lipids. And every single marker on my NMR outside of my LDL was sparkling. Best numbers I'd ever had. My triglycerides were super low. My HDL was up. Um, all the ratios of HDL to total cholesterol looked good. HDL to triglycerides looked fantastic. Uh, the one number that was still super high, even higher, was my LDL. It was up near 300. Um, my GP didn't really know what to make of that, so he sent me to a cardiologist. And the cardiologist ran some tests on me, did an echo, uh, not an echocardiogram. They basically listened to my heart to test for abnormalities. Everything was cool there. Uh, they put me on a treadmill uh, stress test and had me run. Um, I remember I had fasted uh, all that day and told them I was fasted and they didn't think I would last long. And I ended up going for like 25 minutes and every five minutes they would increase the pace and incline of the thing. Um, so I ran like an idiot on that thing for a while. Um, did well on that. And then I went for the thing that I was very excited to go for. Um, the third test that I went for at the cardiologist's office was called a calcium scoring test. And a calcium scoring test was the granddaddy test that I wanted done because it doesn't measure for markers that may or may not be indicative of cardiovascular disease like cholesterol. It actually measures, it measures actual heart disease in your arteries, in your heart, it measures the actual calcium. And the way that it's scored is that it starts at uh, zero and goes all the way up to a thousand. Zero being zero risk, there's zero calcium in your arteries and heart. A thousand is, dear God, how are you still alive? So there's a pretty wide spectrum there. And uh, my score came back as a 14. So I was hoping for zero, uh, but 14 is still pretty good, all things considered. And I was very excited, but my cardiologist wanted to put me back on a statin and I refused. So I stayed on keto and stayed off the statin meds, dropped another 10 pounds. So by the time November of 2017 rolled around, I had lost a grand total of 65 pounds. And I went back in and had some more blood work done, had an NMR profile done. Similar numbers came back, sparkling across the board, really, really fantastic numbers, except for that pesky LDL. And my GP sent me to, referred me to um, a low carb doctor, um, something that I didn't even knew existed here in Albany, in the Albany area. Uh, but I went to see this guy today. He knew what keto was. Um, he knew uh, what low carb was. He knew what it meant to be fat adapted. I answered a lot of the questions he had with answers that I don't think he expected to hear. Um, cause I had kind of, I've been doing this for 11 months. I kind of have learned a lot of things and read up on some things and knew what I was doing. We, we had a good conversation about keto and low carb. However, his whole thing is using keto to transition people to a Mediterranean diet. He's had, um, a lot of success getting people on Mediterranean diets, which is more, um, less fat and more protein. And, you know, he gave me the line that I was dreading that I knew I would probably hear is that, you know, keto is great for when you're just starting out, but as far as maintaining, it's not really something that can get maintained long-term. And I know this to be false. So we talked a little bit about my LDL and how you know, even though my, my calcium score was good, it wasn't zero, even though all of my numbers looked good, except that LDL. And even though my weight is where it was when I was 21 years old, he suggested that I get, I eat fewer marbly cuts of meat. He suggested that I lower my saturated fat. Uh, when I told him that I had butter in my coffee, he looked at me as if I had two heads. I've been doing a lot of reading about the lipid system. I've been watching a lot of videos about lipids and cholesterol and um, 
I'll link this right up here, but there's a video by a guy named Dave Feldman, um, who's not a doctor, not a medical professional. He's an engineer and he has come at his cholesterol, which is similar to mine. He's what you call a hyper responder to the keto diet. His LDL shot up when he started keto. Um, and he's an engineer and he came at the problem from an engineer's perspective and basically gave himself, had blood work drawn every day for I think a month or two months and tracked what he ate over that course of time and found some startling and amazing results and basically concluded that the lipid system uh, is so dynamic and changeable that to base anything on such a changeable system is crazy town. So uh, I'll link it up here again. You should check out Dave Feldman. Um, there's a couple presentations that just kind of blew my mind on YouTube. Um, and so that's where I am these days. I am continuing keto. I'm in maintenance. I'm not going back on statins. Um, despite the pressure from every medical professional in my life to go back on them, uh, I'm not going on them. Um, both for personal reasons, the reasons that I've said before that they... Um, I had some issues with them, some side effects, some achiness, some foggy headedness, um, that I don't want to experience again, but also a, um, an institutional reason for not going back on them. Statins are now the number one drug in the history of drugs. Um, the standards for putting someone on statins, um, have become lower and lower and lower as time has gone by. And I feel like it's mostly about money. So while statins might be lowering my LDL number, I don't feel like that LDL number being lower um, benefits me in any significant way. So that's what my been my experience with uh, cholesterol and statins. I appreciate if you've listened to me ramble for this last 15 minutes or so. I know that this is not really the kind of video that I normally do, uh, but I really wanted to talk about it. I've had some, I feel pretty strongly about it and um, that's where I am. So. So let me know if any of you guys have had similar experiences. Um, I know that in general, cholesterol does go up when you start keto, kind of no matter what, just based on the fact that um, you're using fat for energy. Fat is being mobilized throughout your body. More cholesterol is going to show it up in your blood uh, regardless. But let me know. Let me know what your experience has been with this stuff. Um, I'd love to hear from you and love to chat about it. It's something that I really needed to talk about. And uh, I hope it benefits somebody or I hope somebody can identify with it. Um, and that's going to wrap it up for this week. So, so I thank you for watching. Uh, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you.